Remember this shoe? Good morning, YouTube. What's up, guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today is my third New Balance video in a row. And yes, I know that's a lot of shoes from one brand. But like I said in my last video, we're just getting through some shoes here and I hadn't put any miles in the shoe for a while. I picked it up to get it to 50 and now it's ready for full review, so why not? And that shoe is the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. But first, check out my run from earlier today where I froze my butt off in order to get some footage in this shoe. Let's go. <laughs> structure my full reviews, let me give you a rundown. First, we start with the specs, then we go to the upper, the midsole, the outsole, then I'm gonna talk about price, and then my conclusion on the shoe. And that's where I read it out of five stars. So if it's the best shoe I've ever worn and I never wanna take it off my foot, it's gonna be five stars. And if it's the worst shoe I've ever worn and I never wanna look at it again, it's gonna be one star. Then at the end, I'll throw up a screen with the pros and the cons so you can get a visual idea of what I liked and disliked. Oh, and one more thing before we get started, I do wanna let you guys know that this shoe was sent to me by New Balance. However, they're not telling me what to say. They can't tell me what to say. They're not paying me to make this review and they're not gonna see it before you. The reason why this shoe was so intriguing to a lot of people is because it was a lightweight stability shoe, which is, let's be honest, not something that we see that often on the market. Usually stability shoes are clunky and they're heavy and they're extremely stiff and that's pretty much the exact opposite of what this shoe is. All right, well, let's start with the specs of the New Balance Feel Cell Prism. The New Balance Feel Cell Prism is 7.1 ounces for a women's size eight, but for my size, 10 and a half women's, the shoe came in at 8.2 ounces. It has a six millimeter drop with 28 millimeters of stack in the heel and 22 in the forefoot. And yes, the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism is true to size. The upper of the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism is an engineered mesh. It's fairly coarse and sturdy, but we don't have a ton of overlays throughout the midfoot of this shoe. However, the back heel counter is very sturdy and does help with stability. So the first time I ran in this shoe was in early September, so it was very hot during those months. And now we're in the extreme cold conditions of January. And I gotta say, this shoe is definitely breathable. I felt it in the summer and I definitely feel it now. There's a nice chilly wind blowing through that toe box. And uh, yeah, it's good, but sometimes I'd say a thicker sock does a better does the better trick here. Like I said, the upper material is coarse, but it's not uncomfortable and it never really like bothered me while I was running in it. You do have this New Balance logo here. Um, it doesn't negatively impact anything, but I also don't think it positively impacts anything. I think it's basically just here for design. But one thing I will say about this upper is that it's pretty wide, uh, and I think that's great for a lot of foot types. I think it's gonna be pretty accommodating to many different runners. For me, I had a pretty narrow foot, but with the lacing system in the midfoot, I did get a good lockdown, and then I just had some extra room in the toe box, and. That was fine, no complaints there. I'd rather have more room than not enough. So yeah, not bad. I've seen a couple other people comment or sort of complain about 
the tongue of this shoe. And I have to say, I do agree with them. You have a pretty nice looking sleek upper here. And then you just have this random thick tongue that's not gusseted. It's kind of large. It sticks up uh, while you're running. And it didn't cause me any discomfort, but I'm just not really sure why it is the way it is. It doesn't look like it matches the rest of the shoe. And yeah, the heel counter is really only like the stability element that you have here in this upper. There's really not much else to it. That being said, this upper is pretty comfortable. I didn't get any hot spots, irritation, no blisters or anything like that, which is always a huge plus. And durability wise, it's holding up pretty darn good for 50 plus miles. Oh, and another plus, I had no heel slippage. The midsole of the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism is a full length slab of fuel cell foam. And of course, on the medial side of this shoe, you have a little bit of a medial posting, this triangle that you see here, which is there to help reduce the inward rolling of your foot throughout your stride. So let's touch on the stability of the shoe first, and then we'll get into the feeling of the midsole. Now, I'll be honest with you, when you're filming your foot and watching your stride in slow motion like I am, you really start to see which shoes you're rolling inward in and which ones you're not. And I am still rolling inward in this shoe. I know that this is supposed to be a lightweight stability shoe and it's not supposed to have all these crazy trustic systems and plastic and all this intense motion control stuff that a lot of typical stability shoes have. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't cause me any issues, but I will tell you and you can see that I am rolling inward somewhat. So if you're a person who really needs stability and you can't live without it, then this might not be enough for you. But if you are a person who just wants a little bit of stability, this could be fine. And if you're a neutral runner who just wants to try out the prism, then you'll also be totally fine and you won't even feel the stability elements. Don't get me wrong, I think this concept is really cool. We don't have a ton of stability shoes on the market that can also be tempo day shoes. They're usually big bricks and heavy daily trainers and you know, that's not what this is. You can use this on a tempo day. But I just wanna make it clear to people who really do need stability that this isn't gonna be a replacement for that. It can be an addition, but not a replacement. I've taken this shoe out on many different runs of all different kinds of paces, my longest one being a 10 miler. And I know that some people say that the stability elements of shoes start to hurt your feet or your legs, and I've had that issue myself. Uh, I didn't have that problem here. The stability elements did not bother my feet whatsoever. Now let's talk about the midsole feel. So like I said, we have a full length slab of fuel cell foam here, which we saw in the Rebel, and that's being considered like the neutral sibling to the prism. I gotta say, on my first run in this shoe, I really liked the foam, and on my couple runs after that I was digging it, and then that feeling sort of started to fade a little bit over time. It lost a bit of life and I think it did it quicker than the Rebel did. I am still getting protection in the shoe. It is still comfortable. And on my 10 mile run, I wasn't dying for more cushioning on under my foot by the end of it, but it just feels a little bit lifeless. I feel the midsole compressing under my forefoot, but I don't really feel it coming back up. And I don't really know why that is, but my one speculation is that this is a very wide platform and it flares out a bit here to create more stability because it's a stability shoe. And I'm wondering if maybe that causes the fuel cell foam in this shoe to be spread a little thinner across the midfoot and the forefoot of the shoe. I don't know, but I'm just trying to articulate how this feels. But it's not all negative. In fact, I think that this shoe is cool in the sense that it can do a lot of different stuff. It's pretty versatile. You're getting a teeny bit of stability and it's pretty lightweight, so you can do tempo days in it. You can absolutely do daily training in it. And uh, yeah, maybe the foam's not as exciting as I thought it would be, but it's still getting the job done and it is pretty protective and cushioned. Moving on to the outsole of the prism, you have endurance rubber in the forefoot, you have some uh, surrounding the medial post on the medial side of the midfoot, and you have some more rubber in the heel. I am seeing a little bit of wear on the triangular pattern here, but honestly, it's not bad, and the shoe grips onto stuff just fine. But yeah, taking this on, you know, my usual 
pavement, a little bit of dirt, gravel, grass, that sort of thing. All those surfaces and it's held up just fine and even in wet conditions, it seems to do the trick. No issues with the outsole, big thumbs up. The New Balance Fuel Cell Prism is $119.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which I think is a fair price, although I'd love to see it in like the 110 area where it could compete with the Convara and other like tempo day shoes like that. But okay, $119.95, not terrible. If you're interested in picking up a pair of the Fuel Cell Prism, I will link them down below in the description. Click that link and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind, it is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep ranting and raving about these shoes for as long as I possibly can. So yeah, I really like what New Balance is doing here with the Prism making a lightweight stability shoe, which is very hard to come by, as I've said. And it makes you wonder why more companies aren't making shoes like this. But I do think that they could definitely improve upon it in the future. And for that reason, I'm giving it three and a half out of five stars. I do think that that midsole material needs to be figured out a bit. I do think maybe there's a way to make it a teeny bit more stable, just so that maybe the people who need stability shoes but want more of a tempo day shoe will also feel at home in it. I don't know, I'm not a shoe designer, but that's what I'd like. All right, now let's throw up a screen with the pros and the cons. For pros, I have that it's lightweight, it has an accommodating upper, it's versatile, and it's pretty affordable. For cons, I have that midsole feel, that the stability elements lack a bit, and while this is a really good shoe and it's heading in the right direction, I do think it needs some fine tuning. Overall, I did enjoy my time in the Prism and it gave me hope that stability shoes and stability runners aren't gonna be like the forgotten few, cause actually there's a lot of us. But I do think that it needs a bit of work and that's okay, every shoe needs a bit of work. So I'm eager to see if there is a second version of the Prism how they do stuff differently or what they do differently. But until then, it's good night to the prism and it's onwards to the next shoes we got. Well guys, that concludes my full review of the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Prism. I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. <laughs>